We're back at the bench again today, and this time we're going to take the new product I've made. We have the existing clean amp here, which has a single speaker. And this one is super loud, like crazy loud. That was the whole point of this first one, is nice loud audio. But since then, I've learned a lot more about audio, as well as the quality of tones inside of audio. And I've made a brand new version that included the dual speaker. The first thing you'll notice is the current speakers on the market and all the ones we sell are eight ohm. For the dual, I've gone with four ohm speakers because that allows us to get more bass and low tones. And just like the single model, this also has a headphone amp. So this is the first prototype, it's the very first design. I haven't even powered this up yet or tested anything about it. And this is the very first prototype I've made, so I haven't even powered this up yet to see if it works. And just like the previous design, this one's also sponsored by PCBWay. They were kind enough to send these samples free of charge and sponsor this video. And you can see this awesome matte black finish. It is a kind of fingerprint magnet though, just like the matte black shells. So if you keep it clean and you don't mess with touching it too much after you've cleaned it, you get this nice matte finish. So I may or may not go with the matte finish for the final production version. But either way, you can select matte black, matte green I can probably try next, I've not seen that. Or every other standard colour. In this instance, I went with the full PCB assembly again. I entered the quantity I needed, which was five, all the part numbers, the pads, and within less than, I think, two to three weeks, they managed to turn this around for me. So really fast service, and I'll use them for CNC and SMD stencils next for some upcoming projects, but I can't recommend them enough. Even though they sponsor this video, you know I'll always say my opinion regardless, and I've used others in the past, and I personally now have started to use PCB Way. I do like their professionalism and speed of service. It's also saved me having to make these prototypes with a larger factory, which often cost a lot more and take longer. So without further ado, let's at least see if this thing works, because I literally haven't tested this yet. So I'll bring in my game gear, and let's get a bench power to start with. Turn this over. So there's Sonic up and running. So let's just take the original amp first. Let's make sure everything is fully working on this console. And there we can see it's all running fine. So obviously, this clean amp goes super loud. Far louder than anybody's ever used it, I believe. But you have one speaker. So, let's see if um, the clean amp duo works. Plug in the two four ohm speakers, and we'll sell these speakers on the store along with the release of this product because you will need four ohms. If you use eight ohms, it's going to be a lot quieter. And plug this in, and this shouldn't be as loud because I've made it a lot more about the quality than the sound, but more than loud enough than you'll ever need. So we've got the two speakers in here. Can't hear anything. Ah, there we go. So, first issue I can see is the volume wheel is backwards. So that should be up and it's down. That's a simple fix, that's these two backwards. And that was because the data sheet of the amp was also not super clear on the um, volume voltage. So that's a simple rewire these out to pin backwards. But the other issue we've got, audio sounds nice. Definitely hear that extra bass. So you can definitely hear, I don't know how well it will come from the speakers, but you can massively hear an improvement in audio quality there. There's far more range. So I'm happy with the quality of the audio. We can do some scopes after as well. But, if you noticed as well, if I turn this off all the way, 
we're now getting clicking which is part of the built-in protection of this board so it has a lot of features now such as under voltage protection um, no clip so when the voltage goes too high it will automatically clip and prevent it from damaging the speakers but we have this obviously pulsy so let's just take a look with the oscilloscope what's going on so we've got the scope on so my first suspicion is going to be the obvious the five volt rail so this is an ac mode set to 500 millivolt divisions and let's just wait for some audio turn the audio down you can see already um there is about 30 40 millivolts of ripple which is normal but as soon as you turn the audio off you can already see do the slight interference there so you're now getting like 80 millivolts and because this is set for super sensitive cutoff so we want the cleanest possible audio and if your 5 volt rail drops to even 4.6 i believe i've set it to this will trigger a uh, protection mode to clip because we want this to be the best sounding audio possible and if the voltage rail is dipping it's going to clip to protect the speakers and to protect the quality of the audio so if we turn up here you can see that interference there Turn up more, and there's the clipping protection when it pulses low. Turn it down slightly, and you can see there. These big spikes are what's going to uh, cause it to clip. As soon as it drops sort of below 300 millivolts in ripple, it's going to be cutting. So at least that's a fairly simple thing to fix, hopefully. Uh, the audio comes through the game gear, through an inductor here, which is to filter noise from the rest of the system all the way over up into the speaker. So let me just chuck on a much larger cap for now. I've only got cheap ones here, so let's chuck a nice big one on. And now we've got a giant cap on the five volt rail at the inductor. Let's throw that five volt rail again. And you can see now with the giant cap on, we stay just below that trigger point. And this is just because it's a cheap cap as well. So that's clearly allowed us to go. This is max volume as well. So the larger caps almost solve the problems, however, you can see we're still getting quite a lot of noise. My suspicion is going to be this inductor. This inductor was never designed to pass high current. So if we short that inductor, so effectively bypassing it, you can see it works. Let go. And you can see the amount of voltage difference. So you can see down the bottom left, I'm shorting the inductor with a pair of tweezers. Let go. And you have the issue. So, there's two ways to solve this, and one is simply more capacitance on the clean amp, which I'll do. The other is, I believe, I will include, it makes sense as well, a replacement inductor for those that want to replace this aging inductor on the Game Gear. This isn't designed to handle dual speaker and also the currents involved in powering two four-ohm speakers. So this is going to get stressed anyway if we don't upgrade it. So it's optional. I'll be able to have larger caps on the actual amp, so it's not needed for solving. But if you want the best audio quality, you can see the improvement that shorting out that inductor did. So what we've got to do before this goes into production? Well, firstly, I've got to improve the capacitance on the 5 volt rail on the clean amp side, which I'll do. I'll just put a few more caps on here. These are headphone caps, not amp caps. So. I'll add a few caps on for the power rail stability. I will test a bunch of inductors and scope them for finding the best, smoothest 5 volt rail to try and get that 5 volt rail really nice and clean. I'll confirm all the audio frequencies work, the stereo work, and everything else with frequency analysis and scopes. And then I can pretty much package this up ready for sale. Oh, and I will obviously test the headphones as well to make sure those work. But we can see overall the first prototype has worked pretty well. It's effectively fully functional. So you can see when you make products, even though you don't normally see these videos, nothing ever goes smooth the first time. I simply make these products normally, fix them, and then release them once they're fixed. But I've started to show you guys the process. So this is literally the first version. You can see the problems we've got. You can see the problems we have to fix. And then if I have any more problems, we'll do a video on that as well. But so far, I reckon it's just cleaning up the 5 volt rail to stop clipping and identifying that this inductor on the stock consoles is probably not designed to handle uh, the power that the speakers want or the smoothness of the power more than the actual current. So hopefully these kind of videos you guys enjoy. Yeah, I've mentioned the last few that you love seeing the kind of 
development stages. Let me know what you think about the matte black finish. Do you want matte black? Do you want shiny black? I didn't want to go with white because I wanted to clearly identify the two different boards. It will help visually to identify which amp you have at a glance, even though it should be fairly obvious they're totally different. But I also like this kind of new logo design and the matte black finish. So let me know what you guys want to see in the production run colour. That's it for this one, guys, and I'll catch you in the next.